Hello, everyone. Good morning. So today we are going to start the topic wrapper classes. We will first talk about wrapper classes. And in the second half of the session, I will talk about how do you explain your project. So I'll share my sample sales cloud project and a service cloud project. And then you can take a hint from that project about how you are going to explain your project. But first, we will talk about wrapper classes. So what is wrapper class? OK. Normally, we write a class and then we return something from it. OK, and that return type should be defined by you. Like like if you want to return a string, that could be a return type of a string. If you want to return a con, uh, you know, list of contact, that could be contact or just one contact that could be contact. But consider a scenario or consider a bucket where, you know, see, if you have to define, let's say, a collection variable, you will have to define what type of collection variable it is. Is it a list of contact? Is it a list of, uh, uh, you know, accounts? Is it a list of string? Is it list of IDs? Whatever it is, you have to define the data type in the beginning itself. So it's not like you can mix one contact and one account and one opportunities together in a single list. That is not possible normally with the standard data types available in Salesforce. But wrapper class is a container where you can mix the different different types of uh, data inside single vary inside single data uh, bucket. Okay, so consider consider it as a bucket where you will have the ability to mix different different types of data type as well. Consider that you have so many balls and different different balls of different different colors. So you have a different container. Uh, let's say for red color ball, you have a red container. For a white color ball, you have a white container. But what you want now is that to have a container where you can put any type of ball. Okay, so normally that is not possible in Salesforce because you will have to define the data type for each type of ball, each color of ball. But with the help of wrapper classes, you can do something like that where you can put uh, red, white, yellow, green, whatever you want to put in a in a same bucket. Okay. So that is what wrapper class is. And uh, I will open the developer console. And first, we will see the example. And then we will talk about the use cases. OK. So I'm going to create a new class. Uh, let me name it wrapper test for class. Inside that, I have a method. Okay. And so let's say this method is getting a string of account name. Okay, from your lighting web component so scenario is this the lighting web component will pass you the account name and you need to pass the list of contacts list of opportunities and list of cases associated with this account okay so that is the scenario normally what you will do is that you will get the account name you will pass list of uh, opportunities from one method list of contact from another method and list of cases from another method so you will have to create three different method and those three different methods will be called okay whenever you pass that account name from your lightning web component okay and those three record three list of records will be received separately in your lightning web component that will make you know communication uh, again and again between your lightning web component and your uh, APH class plus that is not a very efficient approach as well because you will have to write three three different methods for that okay so first our first step will be to get the account associated with this account name okay so let's get it down. Equals to the name passed by. All right. 
Uh, see, th there will be few more things you need to do. Like you need to first check if this account list is not null and everything. Okay, I'm assuming currently I'm just showing you how we're going to use it. Okay, now once we get the account list, okay, let's create a wrapper class because otherwise what we can do is that we can create a list of uh, opportunity. and then get the select ID from opportunity where account ID equals to something like that. But by that way you will only be able to pass the list of opportunity you cannot pass pass a list of opportunity similarly you have to uh, you have to create one list for the contact one list for the cases but you cannot you will not be able to pass all three from the single method so that's what we are going to do what we will do we will create a wrapper class public class um, wrapper class and inside that I can define the variables. We need to pass the list of contacts. Let's call it list, list of opportunity, opportunity list and we have to pass the list of is so. Let's see if we are able to save this invalid type contacts because there cannot be contacts. All right, so we are able to save it. Now, how are you going to use this class here? So now you will have to use it right here. So you will create an instance of this. And then now you can access these a contact list, opportunity list, and case list. Okay. So now let's let us modify our query as well. Let's write the sub queries instead of doing the queries again and again. Select ID comma name from contacts. Similarly. Select ID from a name from page. And similarly, one for the cases. Okay. Select ID from cases. Okay. That's how, in a single query, we'll be able to get uh, the result for all the sub queries as well. Now we will have to assign the value. So content wrapper dot contact list is going to be list the first item dot contacts. Similar to this, we will have opportunities as well as cases. So for opportunities, we will have cases we will have this list. Okay. Now, currently we are not returning anything. Okay, so we will have to change it. What we are returning? We are returning a wrapper. Okay, so instead of writing a list of contact or list of account or list of opportunities, we will return the this wrapper. This wrapper contains the list of opportunity, list of uh, con, uh, cases and list of uh, contacts. 
Now we have written the return type, so we'll have to return this statement as well. See, this is just a demo, so I am not using if this is, uh, you know, uh, greater than zero, if size is not null, then only return and all those things. But if you will write it in a real program in your real project and all, you will do the null check here as well. Okay, you will do the null check here as well, you know, to avoid any null pointer exceptions. But that's how we typically use the wrapper classes to return the collection of different, different types of data, you know, in a single return statement rather than writing different, different methods to do that. Okay, so it's time to debug this. Just a second. We will first need to see the account which has the contact opportunities and cases. So this has all three items. We can use this. We are passing the name. So we will just pass the name of it. And let us also first write some debug statement. Otherwise, what will you get? return or we can write debug directly i mean it is returning something so whatever we are writing we will put it inside it Put everything inside the system. So if you see here, you will be able to see you will you got the case list where you have got the cases. There were three cases. You've got one, two, and three. And then you've got the contacts. There were two contacts. So you've got contact one, contact two, and then you have got the opportunities. See, this this is not a complete debug statement, but in a single return, you were able to get the cases, contacts, and opportunity, all three. Okay, so that's where wrapper classes are very helpful. Wrapper classes you will mostly be using whenever you will get the response from the API. Okay, so API response comes in the JSON format in object format, and then you will have to create the wrapper classes uh, just like the way you are getting the results in the object format in the in the in your response from the HTTP. So then wrapper classes will become really helpful for you and you can structureize your return in a way that you will get it, uh, you know, just copy it from your response and paste it in your wrapper because the structure will be same in your wrapper class as well as, as the way you are getting the response from your HTTP callout. So in that cases, you will be using wrapper classes a lot. That's the uh, most major case where you we use the wrapper classes. Okay. And uh, and then there will be a lot of lightning web component scenarios as well, where you will have to pass different thing, and then in return you will be needing different different things. So whenever you are dealing with the a UI as well, then also you will be using a lot of wrapper classes. Okay, so that's how we are going to 